Okay, so here we see the uh, welcome screen of specify. This specify is logged into a copy of the KU plants database. Um, so this demo is about the SGR system, that's the scatter, gather, reconcile, which is a system for finding duplicate specimens that have been uh, distributed out to other collections in hopes of uh, reducing the amount of overlapping data entry that has to be done. So specify comes, or the SGR aspect of specify comes into really two places. The first is kind of an overview um, view that we get under the system menu here if we go to the scatter, gather, reconcile is what SGR stands for. Uh, if we go to this tab, that brings us to here. And uh, on the screen, there's a few different things that are happening. Uh, at the bottom here, we have two different sources of information for the scatter, the SGR process. Uh, record sets are basically sets of uh, records from that are already cataloged into specify. These data sets are represent uh, basically workbench data sets, so these are not necessarily things that have been completely cataloged yet. The workbench is sort of a staging area, so it could contain, for example, pre catalog records. Um, so th these basically represent the our local records, either cataloged or potentially uncataloged that we want to hopefully find duplicates for. On this screen, we have also here a list of match configurations that will determine how the duplicate matching occurs. So this button here, new matcher, will bring up a small uh, dialog that will allow us to configure a new set of match configuration values. Um, so there's an, a name associated that allows us to keep track of our different match configurations. The server URL will be the S Apache Lucene Solar server that contains the index of the records that we want to match against. Um, in this case, I'm going to be matching against a set of an index set of GBIF records. And I believe there's also some uh, Michigan data and uh, and uh, Mexico's Canavio data in there. Um, the match fields are the fields in the index that we will be considering for uh, the similarity of the different records. Here we have uh, filters that we can apply to filter out or require certain fields, field matchings to be present. In this case, I don't want to see, I don't want to be matching against my own records, and I also don't want to be matching against any GBIF records that come from KU. Uh, the boost field allows me to control the different weights that will be placed on the fields in terms of the similarity. The number of results are for when I'm looking at the SGR results for uh, an individual record, how many potential matches do I want to see. So once I do that, my, my new record now, or my new matcher appears here. And then what this allows me to do is I can uh, take either one of these record sets or one of these data sets and bring it up here and drop it onto one of the matchers that I've configured. So I've already done that and what happens is it will produce one of these batch results and what it will have done is taken every record in the source and attempted to match it against the index and just recorded the best possible matching score that was found. And so let's look at this one. So if I take these batch results and drop them on the statistics action, 
it will produce a histogram showing me the number of records that uh, that uh, had a, a, a best possible match of a given score. So for the KU database, uh, we find that uh, most of the specimens are fairly unique. So high confidence of match would be out here in the green area. And we see that there's uh, relatively few of those, uh, demonstrating that um, there's not many specimens that KU has shared with other institutions that have then been cataloged and found their way into GBIF. These records down here are ones that are uh, the best possible match was extremely poor, and so they indicate uh, highly likely to be unique matches. And then there's these sort of uh, yellow area matches that could potentially be or could potentially not be duplicates based on the, the metric that we're using here. Uh, for other data sets, it'll be more of a bimodal structure with the, a lobe down here indicating uh, duplicate specimens and a lobe down here with non-duplicates. So this panel kind of gives us an overview of our data. And um, in the process of generating these batch results, these will also be useful to us when we drill down uh, looking at uh, the workbench application for SGR. So I'll move on to that next. Um, if I, so as I said before, these data sets represent um, sets of records that can be augmented in the workbench that have potentially not been indexed or not been uh, cataloged into the specified database proper. So let me just open this one. It's a, a set of 781 records. Um, so here are those records in the workbench. And these are just uh, 781 records that I selected out of the overall KU plants database. I didn't take the whole database just simply to speed things up and you know, have such a large uh, data set to be dealing with for testing purposes. Um, so having produced the batch results over here, I can now utilize those in visualizing the results on the database. And the way that I would do that is via the SGR button down here. I can right click on this and say Colorize Workbench. And what it will do is it will present me with the names of the different batch match result sets that correspond to this set of data. So let me just pick this one that I ran earlier. I'll say OK. And now what it's done is it's colorized the workbench. So each row, the color of the row indicates the maximum match that was found in the index for that record. So, And these colors have the same meaning as they did on the histogram. So the reds and the, um, and the purples and the oranges are poor, poor matches. And then the greens are good matches. So again, this is kind of an overview uh, or a high-level view of the results and the duplicate possibilities. Uh, when it actually comes to the, what SGR is meant for, which is completing records using duplicates that may have more complete information combined with them, what we can do is select a a row, one of these records in the work workbench here, and then I'll click on this SGR button, and it will fetch, in this case, 10, because that's what I configured in the, in the match configuration. It'll find the 10 best matches for this record that I've selected. In this case, since it was a green one, there's a very high probability that the the best one will actually be a duplicate. And looking at the at these fields, which are highlighted. Uh, the color saturation indicates the degree to which the field contributed to the match score. And we can see that it matched on the collector, the collector's name, the collector's number, and the date of collection. Um, and so we see that this is, in fact, a duplicate specimen. Um, and then what this enables us to do is we notice, oh, this, this record, which is coming from, let me just scroll over, uh, it's coming from 
OSC, this record has uh, been georeferenced and has a latitude and longitude. Let's just see if our local record has that. Uh, in this case, we don't. So let's just uh, take this value and put it in here, and this value, and put it in here. And we've just uh, leveraged the georeferencing that was done by OSC to georeference this record in our local database, or our local workbench, which we could then upload into our database. So that's the basic idea of what SGR is designed to allow users to do. Um, this is kind of where it's at at the moment. Features that I would like to get online soon would be um, instead of this kind of select, cut and paste, having keyboard shortcuts to move back and forth between the fields in the workbench and the fields in the SGR results. Um, another really big feature that needs to be in place will be the uh, displaying images. Um, so that should be more or less a workbench feature uh, independent from SGR. For example, if we have pre-catalog records in, the, in this workbench with uh, image label, uh, label images, we could be interacting data from the, the image of the label into our workbench without utilizing SGR at all, so we'd want to be able to bring up those images. Uh, another situation where images would come into play would be, for example, when we bring up the SGR window, um, if these matching records here that are coming from institutions, if those specimens perhaps had image is stored in morph bank that we could access by using the ID, you know, the catalog of the, the catalog number of the record and the institution that it came from or some other kind of identifying information. If we could bring up that image from Morph Bank, that would obviously be a, uh, a nice feature to have. So in terms of the provenance, capturing the provenance of these, uh, of these data as we're bringing them over, um, so, for example, in this in this case where I brought over the, la the latitude and the longitude, we would like to, it'd be nice to be able to capture the fact that these data came from um, this record from, you know, the institution that published it to GBIF and that it came via GBIF. And uh, this is possibly, a, would obviously be the point of contact between the system and for example, filtered push in terms of injecting uh, a message into the filtered push network of, you know, that that these uh, that these values were used. So that's kind of the overview of where the specify SGR feature is right now.